Hello and thanks for coming back to Great Lakes This YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, remember to hit that subscribe button. Today we have an interview with one of my favorite players in the scene. This is with Jennifer Sawyer from the Michigan Women's Series. Not only is she super cool on the course, but she's a badass bitch off the course as well. We'll learn more about that in the interview. Stay tuned to the end to learn how to win these two discs from MVP and Axiom Disc Golf. And welcome back to the Great Lakes Disc YouTube channel. I'm Brian, as you know, and here with me is one of my favorite humans, Jennifer Sawyer, a.k.a. J-Saw. Welcome. How are you doing today? Hi, Brian. I'm doing quite well. It is a Tuesday that feels like a Monday for me, and this Tuesday is a Wednesday for you. We've established that, so we don't know up from down. No, uh, and welcome to recording that might not come out for like 10 days, so it will be even more confusing for those of you playing along at home. Uh, so anyone that's seen these interviews before knows that, uh, my lead off question is pretty simple, but what's your disc golf origin story? How'd you get into disc golf? So I feel like I have a really unique origin story, um, that not very many other women players can say. Um, I went out with two girlfriends. Um, I've always had women to, to golf with. It's never been a struggle of mine. And I think strange as that sounds, um, kind of led to where I am today and the rest of our conversation, I believe. But no, um, if you remember the Densmore sisters, Bree and Grace Densmore, they were really good friends of mine. They lived in the neighborhood uh, growing up in Battle Creek. And they asked if I wanted to go do this thing called disc golf one day. And off we went to Colebrook. And uh, I liked it. I like being in the woods. Shocker. I like uh I like doing sports and being with friends and maybe some extracurriculars. So that was, it was a good time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, I when I first started my form, cause I also grew up dancing. My form was, I would do a pirouette at my follow through. Um, so that was, so it's really unique. I should have figured well, out how to do uh, that. For, <laughs> yeah. For all of our friends uh, that we see at our favorite team invitational, we would like to see the pirouette back, please. So. <laughs> okay. I will work. I will bring that into this year's form work. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of this year, uh, you are one of the people that are in charge of the Michigan Women's Series. So why don't you give us a little bit of background on what that is and, and how it came to be and what y'all do? Yeah. So the Michigan Women's Series is really a, a set of tournaments that is ran by various Michigan clubs that want to support women in disc golf. Um, to really su support and give a platform for women to not only learn and play disc golf, but to be competitive in disc golf. There's there seems to be a break between, you know, enjoying it and having fun and wanting to compete, but not feeling like there's the platform for you to compete. And, and we wanted to provide that. Uh, and so that's kind of the the purpose. And it started in 2014, so we're on year 10 now. Erin um, Oakley, who, much like everything else in the state about women's disc golf, started the series, and um, it slowly growed. And I came on board with Erin um, and Ashley Jersky as well in 2017, I believe, um, to provide support to Erin. And that's when brought MVP in to be the main headlining sponsor to provide overall series prizes. And then in 2018, Erin stepped away to focus on the things that she wanted to focus on. And Ashley and I officially took over. Um, that leads us to 10, you know, 10 years after this all started, we, we got two more team members on board this year and uh, Jen and Nicole. Uh, so we have a little bit more help and we can, we can focus our efforts a little bit better. Sometimes we feel like we, we bite off too big of a bite <laughs> and then we can't really give good attention when they're needed when it's needed so we're hoping that that additional employees will help uh i should say volunteers should help yeah yeah <laughs> i totally get the uh initial volunteers for sure um so in uh the upcoming months over the next year we have uh how many total events for the michigan women's series this year we have six total events um we have planned a couple classics a couple uh, events that have been there the whole time i have to say kamazoo ladies classic is one um and then also a couple new clubs and a couple new courses so we're really excited to see that 
Uh, Brian, you're you're um, back on the docket this year as well. So thank you for for supporting and, and throwing an event uh, for the Michigan women. Super great. Now, if uh, any of the people that qualify for those divisions are playing today or listening today, I should say, um, how many total events do they need to play to qualify for the series? For 2024, we're requiring four total events to play in order to qualify for the overall series points. Now, if you can't make four or more, don't let that deter you. Still play as many as you can because they're each individual tournaments. So you'll you'll still have the prizes and the expectations of a regular tournament. Your your just won't your points won't go to the overall prize, if that makes sense. Totally makes sense. You can still have fun at the event, meet some new people. And as you said earlier, uh, there'll be more divisions offers, so a larger platform for people to play, which is always good. I know as an experienced TD, sometimes you only get one or two uh, women attending the event. And it's nice to see an event where we have all the divisions offered and you get people from, you know, pro 70 all the way down to junior eight, you know, and that's that's a lot of fun for me as a TD. And that's not an exaggeration. We definitely have pro 70s and junior eights. Um, we're, we're so fortunate to have that kind of um, spread and interest here in Michigan. So I'm not sure. I'd, I'd like to know if any any other state kind of has that same those same numbers and spreads. I think California might be close to yeah. it or Texas. There's good good women's groups and series in, in those areas. But for little old Michigan, who's a lot smaller than California and Texas, um, I think we definitely put up our fight. Yeah. So, do you have? Uh, and this is a off the off the cuff question. So, do you have any idea how many uh, total participants you guys have had over the years, or anything like that? Oh, over the years, I I should take take a little bit of time and and put that together. I did prepare for you today for twenty three and twenty two numbers, so I kind of okay. have that. So how many um, last people? Year, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year we had six events as well, and we had 323 participants. So that's wow. an average of 53 women per event. In 2022, we decided to say yes to everyone who submitted a request, and we held mm -hmm. 12 events, which is was more than we should have bit off. But it, it's so hard to say no. It really, really, right. really is. It's the worst yeah. part about this. Um, but we had 538 total participants across those 12 events um, for a total of 44 women at each event. Now, some of those numbers are going to be the same people that right, went to multiple right. events. But um, I think it's still really great. We fill events now. It was, that was something that we could never have imagined. Um, but I don't think I think last year was the first year we we maxed out on um, players for the course. So we had, I think two, um, two or three. That's fills. awesome. So yeah. it's amazing. So, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of events for women to attend in the state. Uh, there's a, you know, a C tier every weekend in the state and a B tier, you know, from February to November, probably each season, what separates, uh, a Michigan women's series event from, let's say a standard C tier. Uh, well, your standard C tier does not have the requirements that the women's series require. You have your PDGA requirements, of course, but uh, part of what the Michigan Women's Series does is outline requirements for events to hold one of our events. So that includes making sure that there is lunch provided that um, this year and last year has been provided by Great Lakes Discs. So we appreciate you on that. Um, but it's it's amazing to be able to offer lunch to each event for each player. Um, caddies are welcome to you support us as well. But please remember to let your player eat first. Let all players eat first. Um, and then we also require that you have bathrooms on site. So that's something that's often overlooked and taken for granted, I think, by the male population is that it's super easy for you guys and not easy for us. So if you run a women's series event, you do have to offer bathrooms. So if the course you select doesn't have a bathroom on premise, then we request that you order a porta potty or something to that effect to offer that. Um, we also have um, pretty high standards and as far as what kind of prizes and 
players packs are offered. And this isn't even part of our requirements. I think inherently women have more of an imagination <laughs> for things to give out for players packs and prizes. And it's just so much more fun. Um, the Some of the things that, that the women come up with for prizes or raffles is just amazing. I wanted an entire like Ulta pack for a raffle one year, like and with some, you know, door like perfume, like not just like your run of the mill samples, like some really high quality stuff. So we really know how to um, bat our eyelashes and ask for help. I think a little bit more than, although your eyelashes would do really well, Brian. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of support for us. And so, you know, we just leverage those relationships and, and hopefully everyone who participates in an individual event or to the series in general feels like they supported something that is worthwhile and that they see the result of. Um, it's been amazing to see the kind of growth over the last few years. Yeah, it's uh, from a TD perspective, uh, I have often boasted to uh, the women that come to the Rise of the She-Wolf that it is my favorite tournament of the year. Uh, nothing to do with uh, payouts or uh, finances or course or facilities. It's just to do with the amount of support you see from one player to another. It's just full of joy for me. Uh, the laughter sometimes uh, is almost... Uh, uh, distracting if you were a player because people are having a little too much fun and I'm pro that at a Wolfpack Dis event or a Great Lakes Dis event. It's funny if you do go to a women's event, especially one that's really filled, you can't tell if the, the hooting and hollering is from a good drive, a good putt, or an, or an ace. Like you can't tell the difference. It's It's quite amazing. Uh, so as we begin our season, there are some great ways to support this series, I would assume. So what are those great ways? Well, um, first off, uh, Great Lakes Discs, they're supporting us by uh, hosting a fundraiser event in March. I should know the date off the top of my head, Brian, but I do not. I apologize. Uh, but look it up on Disc Golf Scene. It's there. Um, so that is a great way uh, to support and, and give funds directly that go to March 9th, everybody, March 9th. Thank you. Perfect. Um, and then you can also reach out to your local club that's hosting an event, um, the TD that's hosting the event. You can reach out to, to any of the Michigan Women's Series staff directly. If you have a few prizes that you want to donate, that's great. We can um, send those to a particular event. If you want to uh, support say a couple juniors entry fees we will accept that as well right. as creative as you want to be we want to be as fair as possible obviously um like with uh, great lakes sponsor and in and, and their donation we want that to go to every event evenly but we understand that sometimes it's easier to get to your local one um yep. so uh, we're totally open to that too so feel free to reach out to those tds and those clubs um because yeah we as, it's, as that. It's as a TD, uh, we're always looking for the coffee and donut sponsor. Um, that that can just be the person that shows up with that. We're very happy with that always. Absolutely. Um, and then there's day off activities too. If you don't necessarily have the means or you know stuff to give out, give out stuff sounds bad, but you know what I mean. Um, then be a supporter at the event. Reach out to the TD, see if there's any way you can help set up in the morning, see if there's any way you can help facilitate or pick up lunch, um, help break down at the end of the day. There's a lot of things day of that I think a lot of players don't realize happen. And uh, TDs and their staff are usually on site for well over 12 hours um, day of events. So um, the more help that they get, even if you just bring them a cold one at the end of the, the, the day to say thank you, we appreciate that too. For sure. For sure. We always appreciate that. Well, uh, I can't thank you enough for taking some time out of your busy schedule. Uh, you are a, uh, let's say, a super boss outside of the disc golf world and a super boss in the disc golf world. Uh, if you are interested in any sort of information about the Michigan Women's Series, they have a Facebook page, they have a Disc Golf Seed Landing page, they have uh, an Instagram. Uh, you can reach out directly to me and I can get you in contact with people as well. If you are a TD interested in running an event in the future, my suggestion is stop by one of the events this year and see what it's like and 
um, see what uh, all the excitement is about because it is. It's my favorite event of the year that I run. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to be part of Women's Global this year. First time for ah. me. Yeah. Oh, it is? So, I didn't yeah. know that. And you're kicking off our Women's Global or Women's Global doubleheader too. Yeah, no no pressure. Um, you know, just going to hit a home run out of the park right away. Uh, first at bat, I'm ready to do that. Uh, shout out ben to Keely's Link. got that experience on you. So you got, you got some work to do. I, I, I have a secret <laughs> weapon uh, and the secret weapon is named James Reynolds of Lincoln Lake camp. Uh, that man cooks food. He is, he is, uh, he is uh, a person that wants to spoil you when you're on his property. Uh, so I am excited. Last year, he literally, we are setting up, he walks up and he's like, I have these hand lotions and soaps. Maybe they'd like them in their player's pack. I was like, yes, they would like them very much so. <laughs> yeah. So uh, shout out to James and, and Lincoln Lake Camp. Uh, Jennifer, thank you again for your time. Uh, give Jason a follow on her socials as well. We'll link the Michigan Women's Series uh, stuff below. Oh, Jason, I almost blew it. I have the what giveaway. I, I have two MVP discs in honor of your sponsor. Uh, MVP. Uh, we are ready to give those out. Um, I pre-recorded the intro, so I showed them in that. So you're watching it now. You're like, why doesn't Ooh, he have one in his uh... hands? Yeah. Um, so how how should they win? What should they comment below? Um, you're putting me on the spot here. I want to be creative. Yeah. I don't want to be basic, but I might well, have to go basic just for well, lack of ideas. Easy, easy. Basic is obviously, uh, What's your favorite MVP mold? Knowing you and your background and something that we talk about often, maybe uh, your favorite alternative rock band of the 90s. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, let's ask what is your favorite JSAW stamp? Oh, you might have to hit the Google for that. JSAW's in her might fourth have to hit year, the Google fifth for year. That. Um, well, uh, I've had a 2016, 2018, 19, 20, and 23. Yeah, there's a couple so, years I got skipped. Yeah. Uh, the, the, and, and there's also a shirt, too, that, that I think could qualify. You can grab those on the Great Lakes this website. There uh, is. I would accept the JSAW shirt. Uh, then that's, that's my vote. All right. Thanks again <laughs> for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. We ran a little long today. Have a good one.